a critical key for open doors. For open doors. Tonight, any door that must be open, have to open. Any door for this ministry, like I declared, that has to open for an increase to happen in this church, it will open. Any door that must be open for you in 2022, some of you are scheduled for some greatness this year. This will be the year that things will turn around for you and the enemy cannot stop that door from opening in the name of Jesus. You are here to contend to contend, to contend, to open the doors that the Lord has ordained for you. Yes, Lord. He told Timothy, he said, this charge I commit unto you, my son Timothy, according to the doors that the Lord has released unto me. In other words, according to the prophecies. Amen. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. This fast that we are in, I call it foundational. You are laying the right foundation for the year. And so you are, if you are here and you are not partaking of the fast, you are doing yourself a disfavor. It will hurt you at the long run. Because we are laying the right foundation. We are breaking down what needs to be broken down. We are planting what needs to be planted. We are, we are laying, we are, we are doing everything in the foundation so that the, the building can be built. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? If your foundation is weak, you cannot build. This year, as we are fasting, may the Lord empower you May your foundation be strong. Some of you will build levels of houses. According to the level you build, may you take that foundation now in January in the name of Jesus. May your foundation go deep so that your house could be tall in the name of Jesus. Critical key. On Sunday, I mentioned that a key is an authorized system of access. Not a key, a door. A door, as we entered here, there are many rooms in this house, in this whole building. Many rooms. There's a door on every room that is in this building. Which stands to reason that a door is an authorized system for access. In order for you to have to enter into certain rooms, you must go through what? A door. Amen. We must do what? Enter into a certain door. And so you can be in a house. And in the house, you have a living room. We have a dining room. We have a kitchen. We have a bathroom. We have you know, many bedrooms. Now, if you want to sleep, you don't go to the kitchen and lay on the stove. You understand? You enter the door and you enter the where? You go through the door and you enter the where? The bedroom. Amen. If you want to eat, you don't eat in your bathroom. You go to where? The kitchen. So within the house, there are many rooms, but you need doors. To have access. What if you are going to the kitchen, you are hungry, and when you went to the kitchen, when you are going to the kitchen, the door to the kitchen is locked. You will stay there and starve to death because you have no what? Access. You are very sleepy. You are in the kitchen. And there's a nice bed with comfort sheets they're waiting. The room is warm nicely. And you're trying to get into the bedroom. But guess what? The door is locked. Some of you, this has been your destiny. 
There are certain doors that have denied you access. You've gone to a stage in life that you should have entered certain doors. But for some reason, you have not been able to. And so you are still marking time. And today, enough is enough. I'm here to give you a key. A critical one. The most important key. That will open that door for you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord release that key to you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Real quick. Bible said, wherefore we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore I would have come to you, even I, Paul. Hmm. When you make a statement and say, even I, what are you trying to tell me? Even me. That means me, I'm better than you. Do you get it? Paul is saying that me, Paul, the one that was caught up into the third heavens. I met Jesus on my way to Damascus. I saw things that my mouth could not even say. I am the one that the, 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 the revelation of grace was released to. The things that I know, even Peter didn't know. I'm the one that I've wrote most of the New Testament. Even I wanted to come. There is something called Satan who hindered me. Could it be that you should have been somewhere, but Satan has hindered you? Could it be that maybe you should have started that business by now, but Satan has hindered you? Could it be that you should have been married by now, but Satan has hindered you? Even I, Paul, I wanted to come to you once. Not once. He said, I tried more than once, but I was hindered. The access to come to you was closed. The door to come to you was shut. Could it be that your destiny helpers have the door for the destiny helper to come to you has been closed? Some of you would take one person that would change your story. Because God helps men through men. You didn't get that one. God helps men through what? Men. And so when it came to Jesus, he said that Jesus had favor with God and with men. When, when you have favor with God and he gives you favor with men, you will never struggle. But some of you are struggling because you have no favor with men. There are certain men that when you know them, struggle will be erased from your destiny. I pray that your destiny help us. The door for them to come to you. It will not be that you only know them, but they, but they will know you. And they will know their assignment. Their, the, the assignment that they have over your life, they will know it. And when they come to you, they will fulfill that assignment. They will fulfill their ministry. Say, destiny help us. I remember when we were in high school and when I was graduating from high school to college the Lord released a destiny helper it was this man old man almost 70 years who was getting ready to die but God has given him an assignment over us the young men that were in Brooklyn and this man his name was Norman took us on I mean Whatever we needed, he was there to give it to us. He actually helped me to get to college. And the computer, everything that I needed for university, this man is the one that paid for it. Say, destiny help. At, at, at that time, we were very broke. So it's not like, you know, I had somebody that could have helped me. When this man came into my life, there are things that God wanted me to do. There are things that I needed to do. And through him, I was able to do it. Could you believe that the moment I graduated, eh, 
A year after my gradu after graduation is when he died. Destiny helped us. In college, when he I, I didn't even have a TV. He came, gave me money to buy a TV. You know, those days you don't have a TV. In your dorm room, you are done. <laughs> After our games, he was like my father, huh? Eh? He comes to the games, and whatever my coach does, he be coming for my coach. So, you know, we I had that support. Because I didn't have any father here in this land. You understand? May the Lord release someone to you. At the time that you need that person. May you receive that person. When they come into your life, they, they will know what they must do. May God speak to them concerning you. May some people have dreams concerning you. In the name of Jesus. Say, I release my destiny helpers. Say, let the door be open. For my destiny help us to come to me in the name of Jesus. Paul could have helped the Thessalonians, but he couldn't go. Their destiny could have changed, but he couldn't go. Satan hindered them. Not only once, but more than once. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are many what? Hmm. Today this one, I have a different revelation about this one. A great and effectual door is open unto me but there are adversaries. Listen. Don't forget the adversaries. Some of you are in the place of peace now, but I can bet you that there's an adversary waiting for the appointed time to strike. Yeah, the job is good. Yeah, the marriage is good. But you must contend against the adversary. The Lord can open a great door for you. A great marriage. Great children. Great home, great everything. But he said, when he opened greatness, adversaries come. Unless you don't want a great door. But if God has given you anything great, don't think that you will not fight. Because behind it and attaching it, adversaries are there. Those adversaries are there to, number one, hinder you from walking through that door. And they are also there to make sure that they torment you when you even enter into it. The great door. And so everything was fine. You were able to enter into the job. You got it. But the moment you got in there, some things began to happen. Adversaries. They are there to make sure that you leave the job. They are there to make sure that you get fired. They are there to make sure that you don't enjoy that great dawn. It was a big wedding. Nice one. A good wife, good husband. And all of a sudden, guess what? Issues start popping up. Somebody say adversaries. And so we must learn how to contend and keep contending. That is what Jesus said. Men ought to pray and not faint. The moment you get to a place of relaxation is a moment that the enemy will advance. If it took prayer for you to get in, it would take prayer for you to maintain it. If it took prayer for the man to propose to you, it would take prayer for you to sustain the marriage. Don't sit there and think that everything will be gravy. The adversary will come for it. A great door. A great door. A great door. May we enter that great door. And may the adversaries be arrested. May the adversary be tormented. May anything that is blocking your access 
from where you are to where you should be. May that thing be arrested tonight by the authority in the name of Jesus. I cast anything standing between you from where you are and where you should be. Say, I curse it. That is what you're going to do tonight. Remove the obstacle. The adversary must go. They must leave you. They must leave you. They must leave you. Do you know that you can enter when it comes to gates? Gates and doors are the same, but they lead to different places. Before you can enter a house, you will go through a, what? a gate. And so you, go, you enter the compound through gate. And then from the gates, then you enter a door into the house. There are people that have, have access to the gates, right? They are able to go into the gate. But they have not been able to enter the door. So yeah, you can date all right. But to enter the next level with your dating is a problem. So every man come date you for a year and leave you and go and date somebody for six months and marry the person. You have you were you were close to the door, but something hindered you from entering into that door. Today I prophesy to you, and I speak over your life this year. Anything that is hindering you from entering into that door, I know, I know, I know you have a door. You, you see it because you can sense it. You can discern that you are standing at the door. This year, may that door be open. Say be, be, open. be open. Say be open. Be open. Say be open. Be open. Kalama suta lama hasas. Have so much information here. No, I can't. I can't. Doors can also represent limitations and hindrance. Anything limiting us. KFT, North Carolina. Anything that is a hindrance, whether it's coming from our father's houses, our mother's houses, whether it's coming from this city, whether it's coming from this state, whether it's coming from this nation, any hindrance, let the hindrance be arrested. Be arrested. Oh, you are not here to war with me, huh? Some of you think what I'm doing is I'm moving things in the spirit. And those that can move with me, things will move for you. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the, name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the, name of Jesus. the day Goliath fall, fell was the day that the children of Israel had victory. Some Goliath are doors. They are doors that are standing between you and your victory. And I see that Goliath today by your prayers. There are people that have declared that over their dead body. Ah, they said it. Said that over that over their dead body that you you will marry. Over their dead body that you you will start that business. Over their dead body that you will graduate. Over their dead body that you will have children. Over their dead body that you will break through financially. Tonight, may the Lord cause to pass that they will die so that you will break through. May it be so. Yes, Lord. Because your breakthrough is now. Yes. Say my breakthrough is now. Breakthrough Say, is my now. Breakthrough is now. Say my breakthrough is now. Say my breakthrough is now. Anyone, Anyone who is standing in the way, who is standing in die, the way. By fire. die by fire. You better pray. I know people that are very close to certain doors. And sometimes it could be a mere human being that say that they will not allow it. Some of you, 
You better pray. Some of your parents will hinder you from getting to the next level in marriage. I'm telling the truth. There was a lady that was about to get married. And if she would have married at a certain time, she, that marriage would have never come to pass. So the Lord told her, I don't know the testimony she testified. The Lord, I'm giving you this date. Make sure that you marry that date. If you wait after that, that marriage will never come on. Guess what? Somebody in their, in their family was about to die. And when in, in our culture, when people die, it is, oh, sometimes it will take a year for them to bury that person. Now, until they bury the person, there's no celebration going on. And the Lord said, do it. And so the moment she did it, the next week, the person died. You must escape some doors. There are things, listen, that thing could have hindered her marriage for a year. What, if, what would have happened within that year? The man probably would have given up. Amen. A great and effectual door has been opened. But they are who? Say, say, say what? Uh -huh. Adversaries. May those adversaries be ashamed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every level that you go to, there is a door. And there are some doors that you need keys to open. And there are some doors that you need a hammer and a battle axe. <laughs> and the <a> bulldoze <laughs> to break. And I'll give you the different doors. The door to greatness, that one you need key to open. But there are certain ancient doors of evil that you don't need to keep those doors there. You must break it. That door, we don't want to open and close it. Because if we open and close it, guess what? Our children will have to meet that door. Eh? And so that one, you take a hammer, a battle axe, and you break it. Say, I will break certain doors. Every, say every evil door, every evil door in, my life, in my life, in my marriage, in my marriage tonight, 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 break by fire. Break by fire. Say every evil door, every evil door in my father's house, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my mother's house, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, break, 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 break in Jesus' in name, Jesus' name. There are certain things that you must break. Yes, Lord. There are families that have doors of divorce. Anybody enter there? <laughs> Today we will break and break the room. <laughs> doors of poverty. Maybe you are struggling. While your mates are enjoying life, you are still marking time. You are begging them. Those were the days that I was telling my wife yesterday and my friends that used to play ball in overseas and, and I was broke. So when they come, I just hang around with them so that when they go out to buy food, I will get some. The times and seasons. The day those doors were destroyed. I called one of them. I said, you know what? We just bought a house and just paid it off in seven months. I say now I, I I buy food for others. That will be your story. And, and, and see, see, you, you don't believe. You don't believe. But I am example of that. My life turn around just like that. I see your life turning around just like that. Yes, Lord. Those that believe is happening for you. Yes, Lord. There's a divine turn around. There are doors that are being broken. Yes, there are doors that are being broken. broken. Every door of poverty. Break 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 break, break! 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 May you not get access to poverty anymore. You know, there's a commercial. <laughs> there's this Instagram thing. The, the, the person says, "Hey, poverty! I'm today. I'm divorcing you." Something. I, I forgot how he said it. And then he's like now making some heavy food and he's talking over it. The poverty, me and you are over. 
Say it's over between us. Say poverty. It is over between us. Say miscarriages. It is over between us. Say divorce. It is over between us. Say delayed marriage. It is over between us. Say spirit husband. Spirit wife. It is over between us. Say spirit of lust. It is over between us. Say spirit of pornography. It is over between us. Say spirit of gossip. It is over. It is over. Anytime. You see, when you when you enter those doors, there are certain demons that come to you. And those demons have been programmed to make sure that you repeat history. And so sometimes you could be easily offended, angry, sorrowful, and it's all part of the game, amen. Unforgiving, bitter, you know, there are people that it's very hard for them to forgive. And I said that unforgiveness is deeper than what you think. Because if I offend, let's say if I offend Nat. Amen. No, 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 no. This one is very prophetic. In the door that is hindering me from entering here. Somebody say, break! Hey, there you go. By, by, by the virtue of what I'm preaching, I have to go. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if I offend him, and I used to give him high five, you know, anytime I meet him, I say, Matthew, how are you? And then because of the offense, the next time I say this, he withdraws his hand. But he tells you that he has forgiven me. He hasn't forgiven you. Amen. And that is why Jesus said, if your brother sinned against you. But Peter says, it's a cement time. No, it's not cement. Multiply that by 70. Amen. That means that God is expecting us not to change the way we behave towards each other by the offenses that people have offended us. Amen. Amen. And so, what leads to sometimes some of the divorces and bad marriages is inability to forgive. And those are doors. And it's embedded in you from childhood. And so, it's like you are growing up with this. Not knowing that there's a demon, a strong man, a, a, a demonic spirit within the family who, who trained the people to walk in that dimension. There are certain people that are programmed for what is ahead of them. And so they, all their life, what they go through, just like the same way God prepared us for ministry. Do you know how God prepared us for ministry? The things that he put us through. There is no class that Jesus will call you. Come and sit down. Let me teach you. He teach you through life experience. The same way Satan will also teach you life through life experience. And so you can tell what is going to happen to somebody by what they have experienced. And so most of the time you see, even when people get abused, amen, let's say rape happened, it is part of satanic programming. To make sure that that young lady never like men. Especially if the man is somebody that's supposed to have protected her. And she, if she don't get delivered, it will never be possible for her to be able to accept a man as a husband. And it's part of satanic programming. And it's part of the door that the enemy push you through. Amen. And today, if you are here and the enemy is already in his program with you and has opened that door for you to enter in, today, I close that door in the name of Jesus. There are doors that must close and there are doors that must be open. Today, may that door perpetually be closed. And so most of the time, people that get raped, if they have children, the child also go through it if it is not dealt with. People that get abused, you see that it repeat to the next generation. 
Because it is the same spirit who is programming people. Today, satanic programming. Doors that have been opened for Satan to program your family. To program the next generation. Today, say, oh Lord, let those doors be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I closed every satanic door. Every satanic door. These are deep truths. May the Lord deliver us and deliver our children. There are certain things that I went through. I said, Lord, don't let my children go through it. But I believe as a father, you must fight. It's not just saying it. You must fight through prayer for the next generation. To make sure that certain doors are not just open and closed. But they are destroyed. So that when they get there, it will be a smooth transition. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And if you are an older person, let's say among your siblings, you are the oldest. Most of the time, you are called to open some doors. I remember when I got to uh, high school and I was about to go to college, there was a big issue within my family. Spiritual things I'm talking about. Because no one has gone to four-year university in the family. All right? At least, I was the first one that was about to open that door. So the contention was heavy. You know how most people will have their schools, the school they will go to by February, right? February is the time you get admission. I didn't have admission to, uh, to July. And school starts in August. You see, God sometimes don't show up in your time, but he shows up on time. And my auntie one day came to me and said, she said, I had a dream. And the dream, it's like the whole family has gathered. And they were saying that they will not allow you to go to college. And all of a sudden, one of your great-grandfathers showed up and said, allow the child to go to school. And that was it. The moment she told me that dream, within the same week, I got invited to go and do a tryout in front of my coach. And right there, he said, I want this child. I want this guy to be on the team. And I was the first one he signed. At that time, he has just received the contract to be a head coach for Fordham University. He said that I was his first recruit that signed with him. These are those. Now, let me tell you what happened. My brother who was behind me, now when it got to his time, when it got to his time to go to university, you know what? Every university, top division one schools, all in America was want, wanting him. That's why I knew that. See, doors are powerful. Because I was able to break through and go to university. Now, the whole school in the United States, every school wanted him. But now he had choices to be able to choose whatever university he wanted to go to. He ended up in Florida. And that time, they ended up winning the national championship. But you see what I'm talking about? Do you remember that he had options? But when I got there, because I was the older one, I had to break it. So there are certain warfare that you must fight. Say, I'm here to fight. Say, I am here to fight. So don't, don't look at some of your siblings are not going through what you are going through. It's okay. It is okay. Say, it is okay. Say, I am the way, the way maker. The Lord has anointed you to make way for them. When you break through, they will break through. When you go through the door, they will go through it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Today may doors of access be open. And may the doors of hindrance be broken. See, doors of access to greatness, we use keys. Doors of hindrance, we break it down with the battle axe. We break it down with the hammer. So today as we pray, I want to see some hands go. Bah, bah. <laughs> he must break some doors. And so in the door of hindrance, some of you, there are ancient doors of prosperity that has been closed. 
We were delivering one of our brothers. And the spirit said that, ah, his great grandparents exchange riches for children. Can you imagine that the wealth of the family was exchanged for them to have kids? So now they have kids, but there's no wealth. Ah, it's a door of hindrance. That means that there's a door that is hindering them from having wealth. Tonight, if you are such a person here, that there's so many kids in your family, but no money, you better pray. Say, I'll pray. I'll pray. Say, I'll pray. I'll pray. And there are people that have money, but they have no children. So any area in your life you see that there's a hindrance. Tonight as we pray, break, break those doors. Break it and enter into it. And go and possess your possession. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say I will possess my possession. By breaking. Say by breaking the doors of hindrance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See, when you, have, when you stand before a door and have the keys, you will not have fear. May you not be afraid. He said, may you not be afraid. In the name of Jesus. Some of you have entered the city, but you have not been able to break through because the doors are closed. You had access to come to America, but the door of breakthrough is closed. The gate of America was open when you entered. Now doors that must open have been closed tonight in the name of Jesus. May those doors begin to open. I said may those doors begin to open. By the key that you are about to receive now, you will open it. Say I will open it. I need people of faith that believe that they are going to open that door. Some career doors are about to open. Some marital doors are about to open. Yes, Lord. Some children doors are about to open. Open. Some doors of favor are about to open. Some doors of education are about to open. Somebody say, open. open. Amen. Now, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Revelation 3, 7 to 8. It says, and to the angel of the Lord... And the angel of the church in Philadelphia writes, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man do what? Amen. He said, Now I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open what? Door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little st strength. And has kept my word and has not denied my what? Name. Say the key of David. Say the key of David. The key of David. You see, there's one, I said this on Sunday, there's one that holds it. His name is Jesus. Jesus holds a key. And that key, it opens doors. And so if you are here and that doors not opening your life, there's a person that I want to introduce to you. His name is Jesus. You see, you cannot continue with your worldly life and expect Jesus to open that door for you. You must come and submit and be in covenant with him and be and be part of him, be part of his body. That is when doors will be able to be open. Most of you, your testimony that I was hearing today is all part of you stepping into the right place with Christ. And then automatically doors because he holds the key. He was, he holds the key, the credit card key. Somebody said the credit card key. It is in the house of who? Jesus. And today, may he open some doors, some major doors, some pivotal doors, some credit card doors, some important doors for you and your family. And may he close some doors that will not be beneficial for you and your generation. Say, Jesus, open doors for me. You got the key now. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Ask, and it shall be what? Given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, 
and it shall be open unto you. Next. For everyone that asks, receive. And he that seek, find. And to him that knock, it shall be what? So today, I'm here to give you a key. <laughs> that key is very simple. Because there's one that holds it. His name is Jesus. And he's giving us the way to open doors. He say, ask. He say, what? Knock. Somebody say, knock. Say, knock. The knock means pray. Amen. Knock means what? Knock means what? And everyone that prayeth, it shall be what? It shall be what? It shall be what? It shall be what? Tonight, the master key, the critical key, is the key of prayer. And by your prayers, every door begins to open in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, knock. So as we are praying, we are knocking the door. And you know, you see, when we pray, who do we pray to? To the Lord. And so what, what happened? He's the one that holds the master key. And the moment we keep knocking, he said, let me open for my daughter. My daughter is bothering me. Oh, she says she needs marriage this year. Let me open it. He's be, you see, when you are fasting and you are praying, you become like Daniel. The Bible says the first day Daniel prayed, an angel was released to bring the answer to Daniel. But when the angel descended from the third heavens into the second heavens, there was a principality called the Prince of Persia, which withstood the angel for 21 days. So Daniel's prayer and his fasting could have been just one day. And I can see this happening in the heaven. The angel has been arrested in the second heavens. Alright? But the persistent prayer, the fasting, as Daniel and God begin to hear the noise against Daniel, but I answer you two weeks ago, three weeks ago, why do I still hear you with the same thing that you asked for that I've already answered? And I see the Lord look down there and see the angel Gabriel being arrested. And the Lord said, ah, by the persistent prayer of this guy, Daniel, I must now release the defender of Israel to step into the sea to release that angel. Yeah. And Michael, the archangel, was released into the what? The second heavens to contend against the prince of Persia. And when Michael stepped into the place, you know the battle is already won. Because even their master, he kicked them out of heaven. Satan himself was kicked out of heaven by Michael. God did not have time to fight Satan. Because God can never fight his creation. He created it. It's an insult for the creator to fight the creation. So it took Michael. Michael is the one that kicked Satan out. And so when Michael stepped in the scene, the battle has already been won. Today I see Michael stepping in the scene for you. Some of you, your door has been locked because your angel has been blocked. And today I see divine reinforcement coming from heaven by angel Michael. Yes. May the angel be released in the name of Jesus. Divine reinforcement. So the door was closed. A great door was open for what? For Daniel. But there were many adversaries. There was something hindering. Don't play with satanic hindrance. Some of you should have been far in life by now. I'm telling you. What God has for you, you should have been far in life by now. Where you are is not where you should be. Now, don't you desire to be married and having children? Is it a desire of yours? It is a sign that God is the one that placed a the desire there. The Bible says he gave us the desires of what? Of our heart. So if he placed it there, that means he has it in store for you. So how come you look at your age and say, no, nobody's showing up. That is not true. The truth is that somebody is there. But they have me hindered. Don't be a cheeseburger Christian. No. Don't be a Rasta pastor Christian. Don't be a church chicken Christian. Don't be a Jolof and Gary Christian.
don't be a watchy Christian. Amen. You must learn. You see, you have to sometimes sit back and take stock of your life. I say, ah, oh, nah, this can't be. Nah. On top of that, when you see people who even are younger than you getting what you should have gotten, oh, I'm not saying go and be jealous, oh. But you should have said, nah, I should have gotten this too. There's nothing wrong with saying that that should have been me. You must go and contend and say, Lord, whatever is hindering me. What? Don't, don't worry about it. Sometimes forget about the makeup and stuff. Because obviously it's not working. When we went to the mountains, were there any makeup? When you looked at us, we looked like some slaves. Because unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruits. Put your stomach empty. Make your stomach empty for some days. And tell the Lord, I'm not eating until you answer me. When was the last time you did that? When, when was the last time you went on top of the mountain and said, if I perish, I perish? Mm. You sitting there. When life was tough for me, I made a drastic decision. I had $100 for me. My friend, by God, divine arrangement, caused one of my friends to buy me a ticket to Ghana. And all I had was $100 in my pocket. I said, I will go. And I was invited by my spiritual mother to come to the mountain to go to a prayer. I don't know. You know. I said, I have to go because what I'm seeing here, there must be a change. If it were you, you say, you would say, oh, I don't have money. I went to Ghana with $100. Now, when you enter Ghana with $100, you, you are a joke. After almost 17 years of being in this country, that is the kind of life that I was living, man. Can you imagine being in America for 17 years and the day you are returning $100? And so when you see me enjoying life, man. <laughs> every, every money I get like this... <laughs> God is faithful. Before I went, I had, a, I had I had a vision. The Lord said, I will visit you from the month of February through May. Gosh, I didn't know what a visit was. But in his own wisdom, I had to be in Ghana. I had to go into fasting. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was being controlled by the Spirit. The Bible said when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Ghost took him to the wilderness. And he came back full of what? Power. I was led to the mountain. The Lord said that the issues of your life started in Ghana. You must come there and fix it and then come back. <laughs> and he said, somebody brought you, right? Now come and come by. Go and come by yourself. And you see something shift. And that was it. There are certain issues you must go back to the roots and lay the axe to the roots. And the moment it was uprooted, it looks like a, a day and night and hair. It's like night and day. There was a shift, divine shift. What you see here, if it was then, it wouldn't happen. If I was lazy and have excuses and say, oh, I cannot embarrass myself, go to Ghana, they were going to laugh at me, I wouldn't be here. Now I go to Ghana any time that I want. When I went to Ghana, I, it wasn't like I, I didn't even go out. It, it was, can you sleep in this Jacuzco hotel? Oh. You know, it wasn't a, a five-star hotel. It was area hotel. You know the area hotels? The guest houses, you stay there. 
quietly. No complaints. And the Lord saw that humble heart. And he said, my son, you've been down. Now I'm going to shift it and lift you up. Exactly on that February, my life turned around just like that. The visitation happened and my life has never been the same from there. And now it has been upwards and upwards and upwards. May you, may your life also turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. May the doors that were locked in your life be open for you. Yes, Lord. At that time, there are certain prophecies that I didn't believe. And somebody told me, I see you with, with a lot of cars. I see you having like a children's school or a children's orphanage. And I saw you in a big SUV, like the SUV that I had. And you like popped up and the kids were running towards you. All these prophets, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. What are you talking about? You see, some of you don't even believe sitting here. What the Lord have in store for you. But the moment that door opened, oh my God, it, is, it will be a day and night for you. I say it will be a day and night for you. When the Lord turned our captivity, we were like them that what? Dreamt. It will be like a dream. And, and you look back and look at the years and say, ah, is that me now? The one that was begging for food. Is that me now? Pay, pay for others. Is that me now? Oh, I see the Lord changing somebody's story tonight. As I am testifying, I see the Lord changing somebody's story. By your prayers tonight, may every door be open. 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 Door be open. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 11, verse 4. Luke 11, verse, let's start from verse 4. Let's read. Okay, go to verse 5 for me. And he, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves. In other words, give me three bread. Give me three bread. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. That means a friend has visited me. There's no food in my house. And so I want you to give me three bread so I can give it to the friend. In verse 7, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. Hey. And my children are with me in the bed. I cannot rise and what? Give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find, and knock. Somebody say knock. And it shall be open. For everyone that what ask, receive. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knock, it shall be open. Now, do you remember what the friend said? He said, my friend has come and need food. Fine. Uh, you, I know you. And the guy said, listen. The door is closed. I'm here with my children. I don't have time for you. But the Bible said it was not just because he was his friend, but it was just because of his importunity. That word importunity means that because of his never giving up attitude. This is what I see the guy did. He kept knocking the door and said, If you don't open, then nobody will sleep tonight. Some of you fasted one time. The Lord did not open the door. He said, oh, God, I've given up. But this guy, the Bible said, because of his what? Importunity. His staying power. 
this ability to keep at it and say, I know that this can change. Some of you give up too easy. When challenges come, you give up. When the door is closed, you give up. But if you are able to stay at it and keep praying, keep pushing, keep praying, keep pushing. Oh, I see persistent breaking resistance. I see your persistent breaking some doors. I see your persistent breaking that ancient door. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't say, oh Lord, my time is running out. <laughs> some of you, the day you lose your job, we, will have to, we have to go into a fast. Because you may quit the church. You understand? start the church. When people lose jobs, say, hey, Lord, you better open that door now. Amen. People easily give up. But they forgot that when he even came to love, he said, he said something called long suffering. And so, love means long suffering. So, why are you not long suffering? In America, nobody wants to not suffer long. So any little hindrance, oh, I quit. People like to quit. That is why there are so many divorces even within the body of Christ. We have raised a generation that like to quit. And so the moment there's a challenge at work, they quit the job. The moment friendship is not going well, they quit friendship. The moment marriage is not going well, they quit it. The moment relationship is not going well, they quit it. But the Bible said because of his what? Opportunity. What happened? The friend came and said, now take it. So the key for an open door is persistent prayer. Somebody say persistent prayer. Say persistent prayer. Say persistent prayer. Say I will persist in my prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I will persist. In James chapter 5, verse 13. You see, there are doors that only God can open. And so, the key is to what? Pray to him so that he can, pray, he can open it. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 33, what do you say? Is that, is that a, they say that that's a, the, the, the phone number to heaven? Is that what they say? The phone number, if you, if you want to call God, go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 33. Amen. He said, call unto me and I will do what? When was the last time you called unto God concerning that tough situation you are facing? Instead of complaining, and instead of even arguing, when did you take the battle to the Lord? Because I remember that he has the key of David that he opens some things. The Bible said the heart of the king is in the world. And so we, we have to learn how to do spiritual warfare. This is how I see it. Most of the time, Jalik get up. Me and Jalik are there. And all of a sudden, when I see Jalik, I'm annoyed. Right? And I just want to just take him out. This is how demons work. It's not Jalik that I hate. There are demons standing upon Jalik's shoulder here. Those are the demons that are fighting me. So anytime I see Jalik, I think that Jalik is a demon. So instead of me knowing how to fight spiritually, all right, and me and Jalik, you know, we go a long way. And sometimes it could be a wife that you have even committed to and I'm giving your vows to that you love, all of a sudden you see her and you hate her. It is not her that you hate because remember you used to love her. There are spirits that are standing on her shoulders that you are fighting. But if because you don't know what to do when you see those things, you start hating her and want to kill her. Amen. And so this is how the dynamics is. There are demons standing on her shoulder. So instead of us shooting those demons, we end up shooting the person. And the person die and the demons laugh and run away. 
This is how you do spiritual warfare. So when your husband is hard-headed and you're like, I can't take it anymore, learn how to go to the one that has his heart. Instead of fighting him, deal with that thing in the spirit because behind the scenes are demons. Most of the time, some of us are coming from families that marriages don't stand. And you have to be highly spiritual to overcome them. The moment you become highly emotional, you done. You play into their hands. And so friendship that can go far, the enemy can stop it because you lack the understanding of how to fight spiritually. May we start fighting the demons instead of the person. I said, may we start. You see, God is the one that holds the key. And so the moment we pray, he began to turn the key open. And tonight we are about to pray. There are certain people that must open some doors. Some of your bosses, eh? your promotion is in their mouth. All they have to sign for you to get the next promotion. You have to take them to God. Because the next door must open for you. The promotion must come. It will not just come by work, but it will come by pay. They will pay you more. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May you not be promoted and they give you more responsibility and forget to add the money to it. But may you be promoted with more money. I say more money. Say more money. We are about to pray. All the scripture I gave. He said, is any among you afflicted? Let him do what? <laughs> affliction? Prayer? I have affliction in my body? Prayer? Affliction with my children? Prayer? Affliction with my boss? Prayer? Affliction with my church members? Prayer? Affliction with my spouse? Prayer? Affliction in my, with my teachers? Prayer? Somebody say key. See, God is giving us a key this year. And those that are, you see, sometimes we come to church, but we are not all that stay here. We are not all that are here. There are people sitting here, but they are not here. And so what I'm saying, it will not benefit them. But they are ones, and those are the ones that most of the time will come and testify. You are sitting in church and you have not testified. It means that you are not paying attention. Because for you, 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 you are used to it. You're just one of those brave preachers. But this is highly spiritual. The Lord said, I'm giving you a key. A key. A key. A key. If you open, if you learn how to use that key, oh, the battles of your life will end. That generational curse is ending. That generational issue is ending. Is anyone among you afflicted? Let him do what? Pray. Is any Mary? Let him sing what? Hmm. These are keys. Somebody say keys. Say keys. Say keys. He said, when you get the door, get to the door, knock it. Somebody said the law of knocking. You get there, and sometimes you will know that you are you know that you are standing before a door because you know the stages of your life. And most of you, I can discern, most of you have gone to the door of marriage. It has been one of the doors that is so hard. You have the career going, you got your education, you know. And some of you that are married and you are struggling childbearing, you are the door of that childbearing. So anywhere you feel that resistance, because you want to enter into but something is blocking you. You are there. Say, I'm there. Yeah. Say, I'm there. Yeah. And so tonight, as we pray, you know where you are standing. You know what room you want to enter. And as much as you have entered there, because doors, doors are, are like, like um, midwives, right? It leads you to another season. The Lord, the, the doors will lead you to the next level. And so, 
Some of you are just standing there waiting to go to the next level. And today, let today be the day. I'm not here to give you this word just for you to go home and nothing happen in your life. I need people who are saying, the Lord, I'm ready to open some doors. Through my prayer tonight, may every door be open. 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 May the door that I am standing before be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Say prayer. Say prayer. Prayer. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. Say prayer. Prayer is the master key. He said without praying also for us. The God will open unto us a door of utterance. To speak the mysteries of Christ. For which I am also in bonds. Some of us are in bonds. When you are called to the work of ministry. Eh, you, are, you, are, you are a slave. Today I was giving you my anthem, right? That song, it, it gives me perspective of what I'm called for. I'm really not by myself. He said, I am bound. But the end, the God can call you. The enemy can close some doors. The level that you should operate, you cannot operate. But you have been called. With a word in your mouth for the, for the generation. But you cannot operate. He said, without... Praying also for me, us, Paul is talking, that God, the one that has the key, so he carried the key of David. Remember, that this God, the one that we are knocking to tonight, would open unto us a door. Somebody say a door. May God, that we are about to cry out to, open unto us doors of our destiny in the name of Jesus say oh Lord you are the one that holds the key of David and tonight open the door for my destiny open the door for my ministry open the door open the door for my marriage for my children open the door open the door for my career open the door Your prayers and your fasting will not be in vain. When the door was closed for Esther to come before the king. Esther, are you here? Yeah. Amen. Guess what? When they came to him, Mordecai sent the messenger to her and said, Hey, we are about to die. Yo. If you don't do something about it. Esther said, go back, tell them nobody should eat. And drink for three days. And we will fast and pray. Somebody said we will fast and pray. And at that time you can't go to the king. When you are not invited. You will die. Esther said we will go into a fasting and prayer. And if I. And after that I will go before the king. And if I perish. I perish. When was the last time you said I am not eat for three days. Until I see that door open. You McDonald's is still nice. <laughs> what you say? What? Mama G. Since you came here, all you looking for, Mama G, Mama G, Mama G. Amen. When we are fasting like this, some of you should take advantage. As, you see, don't compare yourself to me. Especially if you are runners, be careful. Because the prices we have paid to get here, you haven't paid half of it. You understand? And even with that, we are still fasting. Right after camp, straight to the mountains. And this is not a no, normal mountain in America. This is raw. Somebody say raw mountain. You sleep on the stone. And a sheer mountain. It took us an hour to climb the thing. What takes you an hour to climb up? And the bathroom is not your American bathroom. What is shower? There's nothing called that. Don't go there thinking about shower and clean. No, no, no. I'm 
and say, Lord, we need the purity of the oil. Right after camp, you know how hard we went in camp. And then straight to the mountain. With my wife. And some of us climbed the tent up. And within three days, no food. Three days dry. And the kind of prayers, it's not your, let me lay down. No, 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 no. We went in. Somebody said we went in. From 12 to 5, we are in it. After that, you can go and rest and wake up again. And then we will go to another, on the mountain, there's another level. That is where the pastors go. And those places, people stay in the bush. You call it, we call it the bush. They stay in the bush. And some of them will not come 40 days. Stay there. Whether a, a lion come and eat them, fine. If I do what? If I perish, I perish. Esther say, we will fast and we'll pray. And could you believe that when she went before the king, the door opened for them. He said, go and gather together all the Jews that are in presence in Shushan. And fast, ye and me, neither eat nor drink. Drink, oh, drink. They did not eat nor drink. Three days, night and day. Night or day. I also and my maidens will do what? Will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the what? The king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish... And if I perish, and if I perish, can you get to the level of if I perish, I perish? My sister, you have not done that enough. I know, yeah, you say, Lord, when is he coming? When the marriage, listen, you haven't gone to the point of if I perish, I perish. You know that you should have started the business, my brother. You know that your job is under attack and you are not doing anything about it. You know that money is not coming into an, the account. And you have degrees. There is something wrong. You apply for a job. And nothing show up. And you are sitting there complaining. Sure. You must declare. See, you must declare war. She said, we're ready to war. This is a spiritual war. If I, listen, for three days, nobody eats, nobody drinks. Let's challenge this thing spiritually. There's something about fasting and prayer. If you can lay your stomach there and begin to contend, something will change. It took three days for Jesus to resurrect. It takes three days for, 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 for habits to break. I remember when we were cutting my daughter from pacifier. Three days. The first day was not easy. The second day was not easy. After the third day, she like, it was broken. That, that habit was gone. So three days spiritually is very powerful. Esther said, we will do that in three days. And if I die, and anyone that say they are die, I die, they don't die. Because some of you, the moment we give you dry fast, I will die, oh. <laughs> Me, oh, I can't. I said, oh, pastor, you, you, you don't eat anything at all? mercy for real. <laughs> I remember when we went to the mountain, there are people that were struggling. <laughs> was, uh, there were people that were very quiet on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I said, push, push. Say, Pastor, please leave me alone. <laughs> huh? Now, now, does this look like makeup there? <laughs> you see any hairstylist? Some, this is when we die. Somebody say, this is when we die. Until a grain of wheat falls on the ground. This is where we were falling for three days. This is when we, are, we were in the bush at this time. In the afternoon, we go to the bush. At the night, we come back to the mountain. I saw one of the sisters, Sophia's. An American girl eh, laying flat at night on the stone with no cover. I said, Lord, I know I have some few covers here because I have my prayer shop. 
should I give her some? I said, if I give it to her, I am done. <laughs> so I look at her and say, oh Lord, help her. The next time I woke up, guess what? She's gone because the weather changed. It got very cold. And she went back to the room somewhere. This is when people die. Unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and die. This is when things are changing. When people see things changing in your life, may they never say anything. A lazy person and say, oh, what are these young people doing? Lazy person. When was the last time you went to the mountain? Lazy. When was the last time you, you, you went to the mountain? And this is our second time within the year. What are you talking about? The first time was just me and my wife. Before the anniversary. Came back, now rested. Did the whole week anniversary. Unless a grain of... What price are you willing to pay? American boy, American girl. What price are you willing to pay for your breakthrough? What is the price? Are you ready for the price to pay? Or are you just going to sit there and still do your nails? Did you see first lady doing her nails up there? You see them doing their nails? No, 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 no. It was war. It was war. It was war. It was war. Esther. Three days. I can see that that was Esther there. Huh? Doing, <laughs> doing the battle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me give you another one. And then we're going to pray. Oh, my time. Okay, be on your feet. I was going to talk about Jabez. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 and 10. Be on your feet and let's read Jabez. You see, Jabez was a man like most of you that his destiny was closed. His, it was just closed. The Bible says Jabez or Jabez was, a, was more honorable than his brethren. That means that the promises of God for him was heavy. He was a man of great destiny. There are many prophecies that came for him. He was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called unto the God of Israel. That word called means pray. Call unto me, and I will do what? He prayed unto God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would have blessed me indeed, and break doors and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. He prayed, right? And the line that prayed and his request was granted. He prayed and the door was open. He prayed and the door was open. He prayed and his destiny was opened up. Today, if, if you are here, you are about to pray for your destiny to open up in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, open up my destiny. There are doors that must open for North Carolina branch. Doors for increase. Doors for prosperity. You will not be in this place and be broke. Uh, uh, okay, FT, we are not broke. It doesn't matter where we go. It could be a dry land. But when we step in, it becomes fertile. May the door of fertility, fertile land, be open unto KFT branch here in North Carolina. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
May the door open, may the Lord open door for soul winning. Souls, souls, souls. May that door be open and may they run towards this place. In the name of Jesus. 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 When Hannah womb was closed, he took the key of prayer. And so, and so there are certain closed things that you must go into serious prayer. Prayer. And some of you, prayer is not enough. You must add fasting. And after fasting, you may, you may add a vow. And after a vow, you may add some sacrifices. You must, you must do all what is required spiritually. If God can do it for me, yeah. listen, yours is easy. Oh, you, you don't understand what I've gone through in life. I got out when the market crash. Yeah. Imagine starting your career and the whole financial market crash. At least you, you got a job <laughs> for six, seven years. You couldn't maintain a, a stable job. With all your degrees from Fordham University mean nothing. Door. And you see your friends going ahead. And you are the Christian brother, the Christian brother, who always talk about Christ. And your life look like opposites. How do you maintain your ways before him? But you see, it was a test that I needed to pass. There were days that I felt like giving up. But I'll get up again and keep moving. And one day, one day. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. It is better now. And it will get better in the name of Jesus. May every door that has been closed for your destiny. You see, her womb open as a result of the prayer she went into. I see somebody's womb opening tonight. I see somebody's womb opening tonight. Yes, Lord. I see somebody's heavens opening tonight. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Are you ready? Yes. The Bible said when Jesus was baptized, why he was praying. The Bible said why he being baptized. The man was praying. And as he was praying, the heavens opened. Kaish. Prayer opened your heavens. I say, prayer, open your heavens. When your heavens open, the earth will receive you. In the brass heaven. Some of you, they have put a brass, a metal, over your heavens. It's like even when God released the rain, it, not, it doesn't reach you. When God released the blessing, it does not reach you. Today, that brass will be broken. As you pray, your heavens will be wide open. Somebody say, wide open. Wide open. Say wide open. Wide open. And God will confirm you. He said, this is my beloved son. In whom, in him I'm well pleased. And also, Elijah prayed and the rain came down. Amen. Because of time, I'm not going to get into that. But I want us to pray. Today, the Lord said, I'm giving you a key. The key is prayer. Somebody say prayer. Uh, Somebody say prayer. Prayer. And so anytime you see a prayer, prayer meeting, you better run. Because prayers open doors. You come there with a mindset that as I'm praying, doors begin to open for me. Amen. Amen. Don't, I know I like, I like prophecies. And I think I like prophecy more than you do. Right? Prophecies are good. It opens some things up. But when prophecy comes, there's a work to be done on it. So prayer is a very big key. That even after you have received the prophetic word, you must contend through prayer. If you sit there and say, oh, because I have received prophecy, it will come to pass. The devil is alive. You will sit there and think that the prophet was a, pro was a, was a, was a false prophet. Please, take full responsibility. Are you ready to take full responsibility? Are you ready to pray some dangerous prayers? Yes. Are you ready to, to, to go to the next level? Yes. In the name of Jesus. 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 
Now, is there anyone here before we enter into some dangerous prayers? If you do not have a covenant with Jesus, your prayers will not be answered. If you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to come up right now. I want to pray with you before we go into warfare. Anyone here? Please close your eyes. If you are here, you want to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Jesus is the one that holds the key to your destiny. Without him, you cannot enter into an open door. He holds the key of David over you. To open doors that no man can close. And to close doors that no man can open. If you are here and you don't know that Jesus, I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you to establish a relationship with him. Amen. 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 We are about to pray. Man. So many information here. Huh? Amen. I want you to lift up your voice. Just build up some capacity for me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build up capacity. Now, tonight prayers. No gentility. Don't be a, a diplomatic Christian tonight. Because you know the door that is closed in your life. Let the spirit of prayer be released. Let the mantle of prayer fall in this house. Hey, Katala Masata. Rapatoli Masitala Mayapa. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, what kind of prayers are going to open the door tonight? Let me give you the, another scripture. James chapter 5 verse 16. James 5 16. That is the kind of prayer we are about to pray. Some of you may have to take, <laughs> take it off. He said, confess your thoughts one to another and pray one for another that ye may be what? Healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a KFT member who is righteous shall but avail much. Amen. He said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Give me the amplifier for this one. So tonight, I'm expecting this effectual, fervent prayer. Not your quiet prayers. All right? Now, if something is fervent, if you Google it, it's, it means that it's hot and boiling. <laughs> Google it. Put the Google definition up if you can. It's something that is hot. But by the time we finish this prayer, you must be sweating. Fervent. You're slow. The Bible said, and, and Elijah put his face between his knees. And he said, tonight, whether the, the, the heavens like it or the, the door must be open. 
So seven dimensions. He prayed. The door was not open. He went back. Another one. Another one. Until the seventh time when the sign came that the, the heavens are open. Amen. Amen. Tonight, that kind of prayer I'm, I'm expecting from you. Yes, Lord. He said, heaven, having, having or displaying a passionate intensity. So when people come and we are so intense with our prayers because we understand fervent prayer. Amen. 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 What's the next definition that connects to this? Okay, fine. Go to my scripture. Take me back to the scripture, please. The amplifier. Okay. Forget it. Amen. Tonight we are going to make power available. Amen. So we don't have the amplifier, right? And so that's fine. Amen. We want to pray tonight fervently. Intensity. I need an intensified prayer from you. You are saying, Lord, let doors begin to open. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, In the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. He said, the heart felt and persistent prayer of a righteous man who is a believer can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can, and can have tremendous power. Amen. That Amen. is the amplified version of James 5.16. Amen. 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 And tonight, by your intensity in prayer, by your effective if fervent prayers. Yes, Lord. I see those doors opening. In yes, the Lord. name of Jesus. I see some doors cracking. Yes, Lord. I see some doors being destroyed. Yes, Lord. I see doors of access being opened to you. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Say, my Father, my Father. My Father, my Father. I ask, I ask that every obstacle, that every every obstacle to my open doors, to my open doors in life, in life, be totally, be totally dismantled, dismantled tonight, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Say, my Father, my Father, I ask, I ask, I ask that every obstacle, that every obstacle to my open Open door, to my open door in life, in life to be totally to be dismantled, 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 dismantled tonight, 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 tonight in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Begin to dismantle every closed door. Every obstacle to our open door, let it be dismantled. Dismantle. 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 For a great and effectual door has been opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. Every obstacle, every adversary to your open door, let it be dismantled. Let it be dismantled. Let it be dismantled. Oh, somebody pray. Somebody pray. Let that obstacle be dismantled. 
be dismantled. Come on, North Carolina. Dismantle the obstacle. For a great and effectual door has been opened. And there are many adversaries. Let the adversaries be arrested. Hey! 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 Atalabaya Pantoli Makapa Italabaya Pantoli Makapa Italabala Baraba Baba 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 in your father's house. It could be witches in your mother's house. It could be a demonic altar full of demons that are hindering you with your open door. Jesus. He said, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. But there are many, many. Somebody say many. 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 When are they going to leave you so you can enjoy your life? When, they are, when are they going to leave you so you can graduate? When, they, when are they going to leave you so that you can buy a house? When are they going to leave you so you can also have a child? When are they going to leave you so that you also can also say, I do? When are they going to leave you alone so that you can enjoy your marriage? It's like the problems that are entering your marriage is like a snake with many heads. You cut one, another one shows up. They are the adversaries. Tonight, say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. I receive sword from heaven. I receive sword from, from heaven. heaven. <laughs> yes. Listen, so. You are about to enter. I want you to envision them, whoever it is that is standing before you, that is hindering you from entering.
begin to thrust them through with the sword. As you are praying, see yourself and some of you need to go back to your father's house and begin to slash some of the obstacles that are there. Some of the pharaohs and the herods and the goliaths that are standing as doors. They must die. You know, Uzziah was a door for Isaiah. He said in the year, in Isaiah 6, he said in the year that King Uzziah died, it is when the door opened for Isaiah. He entered heaven and he saw Uzziah was a door. Until he goes, Isaiah cannot enter. There are some Uzziahs that must die tonight. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to do some warfare? Yes. And so you are praying. But know that you are holding a sword. And this sword is cut, see, cut your head off. Pierce your heart. Pierce, begin to trust them. So go in there as a warrior. With a sword everywhere. See them. Get out of here. Look, just leave me alone. Begin to cut them. Those that are attacking your marriage. Attacking your children. Attacking your career. Attacking your finances. Begin to trust them through. By the sword. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take hold. I take hold of the sword of the sword of heaven. Of heaven for warfare. For warfare. So tonight, tonight, as I begin to pray, I begin to pray. Let every obstacle, let every obstacle against my open door, against my open door, be destroyed. 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 Say any adversary, any adversary standing in the way, standing in the way of my open door, of my open door. Say tonight, tonight, I trust you through by the sword. Of heaven. In, the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus, 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 come on, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, I am a, 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 Somebody Oh, <laughs> 
I dismantle. Say I dismantle. I dismantle. I dismantle. I dismantle. Demonic altars. Demonic altars from my background. From my background. That are contended. That are contended. That have become an adversary. That have become, become, become an obstacle. That have become an obstacle to my open door. To my open door. Say be destroyed. 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 are a meeting place between demonic powers and human beings. All tests are a meeting place between deity and human beings. That means a spirit cannot take from human beings unless it is through the system of altars, which stands to reason that altars are doors. They are authorized systems. They are they give authority, they give authorization for demons to be able to receive or to be able to interact with us. So in the family where there are demonic activity, it is a sign that there's an altar. Spirit does not just step in. They need a platform. And that platform is a platform of altar, demonic altars. That's like how God also have altars. Demons also have, uh, Satan also have altars. And he uses those things to affect destinies, to affect nations, to affect the individuals. Amen. Say altars. And so we must dismantle it. Some of us are coming from backgrounds. If some of you, if you go back to your place where your mother was born, there's a demonic God, there's a God that is there. Some of you may have never seen your village before. But they are demonic altars. And I can tell you that they are demonic altars by the dead, by the level of demonic activity that happen within your family. Amen. The things you see, the drug addiction, the diabetes, the cancer, all those afflictions you see, it is a sign that there's a demonic activity, demonic altar, because demons can never be there by themselves. It has to be done by a platform altar. When I say altars, I'm explaining to you so that you know how to pray. Amen. Because people in America think that those are not here. But there's a lot of demonic activities in your family. And that tells me there's a satanic altar. There are people that are joined the Freemason. All kinds of occultic groups. Yeah, witchcraft is, is, is fashion. Amen. And so tonight... I just look at all the demonic activity. Some of the delay in your marriage is a sign. The delay itself is a sign that is a demonic order. The divorce that you've seen is a sign that's a demonic order. The non progression, the poverty, all those are signs that is a demonic order. Tonight we want to break it. Break. Say break. Break. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. I take hold. I take hold. Of the battle axe of the battle of demonic order in, 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 in my background, in my background, in my background, in my background, in my family, in my family, in my life, in my life. That has become that has become an obstacle, an obstacle to my open door. To my open door. Tonight, 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 I break it. 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 Now, 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 now. Pride! 
Montez contend against my ministry. Pray. Montez contend against the deity. Pray. 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 Montez contend against my health. Pray. Mortis, demonic mortis, from your father's house, from your mother's house, break it, 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 Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Say my father. My father. I ask. I ask for supernatural. For supernatural. Open doors. Open doors. Of favor. Of favor. For my life. For my life. And family. And family. Tonight. Tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let supernatural doors of favor be open. Favor is the currency of the kingdom. When you have it, you don't struggle. Book of Esther. 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 You, got, you need to go back to the book of Esther. Huh? Esther 2.15. The Bible said there was favor upon this young girl. Huh? That if Esther show up here, everybody will favor her. Even if you were a witch, you will still favor her. That is the level of oil that was upon that young girl. The Bible said, and now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, 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 the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all. Somebody say all. Oh. <laughs> Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Oof. There was something that was on her. When Esther show up, you will favor her. Jesus. And so imagine if you are married to Esther. You don't struggle. So before we go, say, Esther, let's go. You go. And Esther is an opening door. Jesus. Because favor is, favor is the key. Yes, Lord. Favor is the currency that pay for things that money can buy. You understand? When you look, is it all? Oh, that means even if, if you're a demon, eh? a demon, or a witch, a wizard, an occultic man. When you saw a good man, a pastor, a church member, when you saw this young lady called Esther, you favor her. We are praying for such a door to open. And so, if I were you, you would cry out. Tonight, let tonight be the night. Let tonight be the night. Yes, Lord. You see, why was she picked? Because she was favored. That means favor will bring your husband. Favor will bring your wife. Yes, Lord. Favor will bring you that spouse. Yes. It was by the favor of God upon her life that caused her to be chosen. 
So say, my father, my father. My father, my father. father. Pray like you want to pray fervently. Say, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father. father. My father, my father. My father, my father. I ask. I ask. I knock. I knock. I knock. I knock. For supernatural. For supernatural. Don't open it. 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 For favor. For favor. 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 For my life. For my life. For my family. For my family. In the name of Jesus. 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 Somebody begin to knock. Pray. The door will be open. For favor. Let the door of favor be open. Hey, Let the door of favor be open for our church. Let the door of favor be open for every member. Let the door of favor be open unto your same family. Let the door of favor. 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 The open. 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 Supernatural door. Open it. Of favor. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Favor! 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 In the name of Jesus, may the door of favor be open for this branch. Yes, Lord Jesus. May the door of favor be open for KFT Worldwide. Yes, Lord. May the door of favor be open for every marriage here. Yes, Lord. May the door of favor be open for every woman here. Yes, Lord. May the door of favor be open for every man here. Yes, Lord. May the door of favor be open for every child. Yes, Lord. In this church. Some people they are places, not everybody favor them. Even your enemy will begin to Jesus. That that girl Esther was the dangerous girl. Sure. When they saw her, even the one that were competing with her favor her. The game had been lost before it started. He said, I'm sure they saw her. Right? They were in the house. They probably saw this young, beautiful girl come. And I'm sure they were all dressed with the makeup. Oh, the shoes, the dress, everything, the jewelry. But Esther came with as simple as possible. Somebody said, as simple as possible. And they saw her and said, eh. That means it's not about the outside, guys. It is what is inside. I see favor come you. And when a guy come and say, Pastor, I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> and there are many beautiful girls in the church. 
What will make him to pick one of the girls? Somebody say favor. Favor. May you be favored. Yes, Lord, Lord. May you be favored. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. May you be the first choice. Yes, Lord. Lord. When they're looking for somebody to promote a work, may you be the one chosen. Yes, yes. Not because even you are a hard worker, but you are favored. Yes, Somebody say favor. 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 Fav
When they were past the first and the second ward, they came onto the iron gate. Somebody say the iron gate. The iron gate. That leaded onto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. Amen. Now, I like this. Iron gate. Somebody say iron gate. Iron gate. Now, this iron gate, it leads where? Into the city. That means that, yes, you can enter the city, but without the iron gate being destroyed, the city can never see you. There are people that have entered into the nation, but they have not been accepted. If this ministry is going to be accepted by this land, the iron gate must break. Yes, Lord. Right. What break acceptance is the breaking of the iron gate. Yes, if you look at the previous verse, there was many gates that were opening for Peter until he got to the iron gate, the last one that led him to the city. May our ministries, any iron gate standing in the way of our ministry, may it break so that the right. nation can accept KFT. Yes, I, I, I don't know you are, if you get this. What is standing in our way for the nation to accept the, the, the ministry? You know, people sometimes call and say, oh, wow, this is what America needs. So what is stopping America from seeing what we are having here? Somebody say the iron gate. Iron gate. And so tonight, we must break it. Break it. Yes, One thing that the prophetess told me, is that she saw a lot of national attention for this church. If that is going to happen, the iron gate must break, break so that the city can accept us. It is what leads to the nation. And tonight, are we ready to break it? What if at your job place the CNN come and interview you? You understand? CNN pop in prayer city and say, ah, how did you guys do it? Ah, you understand? Say national attention. National attention. TVN call you say, I need you to be on TVN. That's right. All this we are doing, the, the nation needs it. The nation needs it. It would take us to break out. Break the iron gate. Say, I'm ready to break it. I'm ready to break it. Say, I am ready to break it. I am ready to break it. What is stopping your business from being accepted in a city? Some of you, the only people that buy your stuff is KFT members. You understand? The nation has not accepted your product yet. And so the iron gate must break so that the world can receive you. It is what opened you up. That is the next level for KFT North Carolina. May the iron gate break! Break! So that souls will be running here. It will be full. Yes, Lord. Because they need this. They need this. They need, say they need it. They need it. Ah, many people are oppressed, depressed, tormented by demons. They need this ministry. But the iron gate will not keep us behind. The Bible said that it opened on its own accord. Tonight by our prayer. Now if you look, look at the previous verses, guess what? The church was praying for Peter. And so when he got to the iron gate by their prayers, it opened. And 
tonight by your prayers, every iron gate is about to open. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Do you, do you want your ministry, Jesse, to be accepted by the world? Yes, Lord. You must cry out. Yes, Lord. But, uh, listen, don't be a local champion. Don't be a local champion. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Any iron gate. Any iron gate. Standing between me. Standing between me. And the city. And the city. And the world. And the world. And the world. And the world. Tonight. 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 Let the iron gate. Open. 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 Pray, 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 pray. Come on, 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 pray, 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 let the iron gate break. Let it open up to KRT. Let it open up to this ministry. Let the iron gate break. Let it open. Open up to our ministry. Alabasa. Let the iron get break. Crap. May my ministry be accepted in America. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Papa, Papa. Oh, <laughs> 
Yes, Lord. Gosh. This is, we will pray these prayers until the, we see manifestation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The iron gate must give up. You see, if you, do you know how it opened? You see how now when you go to the mall, when you step by the door? At that time, that automatic door was not established then. Oh. This is Jesus' days. How did it happen then? Somebody say Brams. They step. The moment they got close to it, they open. From today, by your prayers. Yes, Lord. When you step by the iron gate. Yes, Lord. Lord. That will lead you to the city. Yes. For the city to accept you. Yes, Lord. When you step close to it, may it open on its own accord. Yes, Lord. I said, may it open on its own accord. Yes, Lord. May it open on its own accord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The door open, good things find you. My sister, you're about to experience good things. Amen. My brother, you're about to experience good things. Yes, Lord. I know when you have money, you feel good. That's right. You're about to see increase. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. You know, when men, when men are broke, they don't feel good. But you're about to see some, some cash. Amen. Yes, Lord. Some deposits. Cash money. Your money will stay. That's right. I say your savings will not be touched. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. It will increase. 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 Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. When they got to the tomb of Jesus, the tomb, they put a stone to hinder Jesus from coming out. But on the day when God was ready to remove Jesus from there, an angel was sent to come and remove the stone. I see an angel. Some of you, you were placed in the tomb and they cover you up. I see an angel of the Lord by your prayers tonight Lord. removing that stone. Yes, Lord. Rowing away that stone. Yes, Lord. Rowing away that stone. Yes, Lord. Rowing away that stone. Yes, Lord. I see them rowing away the stone of finances. Yes, Lord. Fruitfulness. Yes, Lord. Marriage. Yes, Lord. Ministry. Yes, Lord. I see rowing away. Rowing away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That stone that was hindering you from buying the house has been rolled away. Yes, Lord. That stone that was hindering this church from growing. Having a stable place in North Carolina today, by the authority of Jesus, Jesus name, and by every anointing upon my life, yes, Lord, and upon the prophetess life, yes, Lord. Tonight we declare, yes, Lord. Let the stone be rolled away. And as you celebrate your one year. I declare establishment. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. I declare establishment. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. I declare establishment. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. North Carolina, KFT, be established in this land. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Have your place in this land. Yes, yes Lord. Possess this land. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Come on, give a clap of him to the Lord. Amen. Anything that closed up this church for many for a year, today has given way. 
I say it has given way. I command the heavens over this ministry. This branch. Yes, Lord. Be open. 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 You know how it's very spiritual that they are celebrating their one year in time of fasting. You see, when it's your birthday, eh, and you fast, God releases some blessings to you. There are certain graces that come upon you. But America tell you to go and just eat your way out. You have to be spiritual that on birthdays. God does something. And today being your birthday, the heavens are open. And graces, testimony will be an overflow in this church. Lord, souls will overflow. Amen. Yes, Lord. The prophetic word that was given you by the prophet says that you buy a church building, you own, you build your own in this land. Yes. You buy a land, it will come to pass. Amen. I say it will come to pass. Amen. That door is already open. Yes, Lord. This is just the beginning. And so be encouraged because the heavens are open. Yes, Lord. Souls, souls, somebody say souls, souls are running.